now have the pleasure to introduce engineer Obadiah Simon Incom, who was appointed uh, as the general director general of the Nigeria Mining Cadaster, an agency under the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development in January 2019. His Excellency, the, the Minister of Mines and Petroleum, other ministers here, high commissioners, distinguished organizers of the African Down Under, on this very memorable day, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I am standing here to represent my Honorable Minister, Dr. Dele Alake, who was looking forward to come for this African Down Under. He was here last year, and the excitement of last year made him wish he was here, but because of other official exigencies, particularly going with the President for other functions, he is not able to be here and he has requested me to represent him. And if for any reason I make this presentation and you find me stammering, it is me that is stammering, not my honorable minister. <laughs> and if for any reason you find the speech going on well, you know that is my honorable minister because he's a professional and diligent and very, very articulate minister. So I thank you very much for having this opportunity to be here. I may now have to change my voice from the Director General to the Honorable Minister's voice. Uh, first of all, who are we? I will start to say we are Africans. Who are we? We are Africans and Nigerians coming to the 22nd African Down Under. I will still ask, who are we, Nigeria? Who is Nigeria? Nigeria has a population of over 200 million people covering a land space of the western region of 924,000 square kilometers on the western region of Africa. Permit me to say Nigeria is the most populous black African nation. That is not just enough. We are happy to be here. And from the records, the African Down Under has always been an exciting conference, irrespective of the distance, to be able to come to. My presentation is simply going to be up to some of the highlights, as indicated. And looking at Nigeria, the history of Nigeria in terms of mineral. The tin was discovered between 1700 to 1705. And organized mining started in 1903. And particularly when you look at the aspects of uh, the country, you definitely notice that oil came into the country. Discovery of oil was in 1956. Actually, in 1903, which one can say was the discovery of minerals, was the mineral survey of the northern protectorate 
and then a year later it was the Southern Protectorate in 1904. So in 1940, that was when organized mining actually commenced. And looking at the aspects of the mineral sector, as at 1940, Nigeria was already on the map of mineral producing countries of t for tin, columbite, and coal. In 1956, the black gold was discovered, which tended to actually make Nigeria turn away from the abundant mineral resources that we have. In view of that, that is the journey for Nigeria in terms of the history of minerals so far. Going beyond that, where are we and what are we doing? Looking at the conference itself, you will notice and agree with me that the African Down Under Conference continues to play a pivotal role in fostering strong business relations and bilaterals towards investments opportunity between Australia and African companies. Distinguished guests, esteemed colleagues and gentlemen, it is a great honor to be in attendance at the prestigious gathering of this 22nd uh, African Down Under Conference. Nigeria has progressed since then. You can see the discovery of minerals in 1700 of tin, and then subsequently, where we are now, looking at the stride made, achievements in the mining sector, there have been a substantial contribution on the GDP and over 500,000 jobs counting has been created and ensuring that at the end of the day we have strong international investment relationships towards the mining sector. One thing for sure is, if you look at the fact that we had to diversify into the mining sector, having discovered oil and abandoned our mineral sector, we have ongoing projects. These ongoing projects are the Nigerian Mineral Resources Decision Support System, a one-stop shop platform whereby investors will be able to now go and navigate through and take their decision, just like the word says. The Nigerian Mineral Prospectivity Map, which gives the prospects of minerals in Nigeria, capacity building, industrial minerals development program. We look at our gemstone development and at the same time, looking at key critical minerals, which is very key to industrialization and the mineral growth of the sector. Furthermore, when you are taking a journey, you must be able to now have a map. And that is why Nigeria has been able to now develop a roadmap to be able to know where we are and where we are going. We have developed an establishment of a remote sensing system to monitor artisanal mining and upgrade facilities. And at the same time, a transparent mineral title administration, the mining cadastral system, we have migrated the system to an online system which is about 
two years now, up running. The essence is to be able to now open up the space and create more trans uh, transparency, due reference, thematic maps, with the abundant bitumen and tar sand that we have in Nigeria, we are developing our bitumen blocks so as we have self-sufficiency in terms of our roads. We are conscious of global investments and promoting international relationship. And that is one of the key issues why we are even coming around all the way to be able to now have and attend this conference to bring in investors towards the sector. Permit me again to be able to now look at establishing a Nigerian Solid Minerals Corporation, which will be a vehicle, special purpose vehicle, that will be able to now allow private investments into the sector through joint ventures with multinationals, and most importantly, any country that does not have geoscience data, does not even know what it has, then that means it's not ready for business. We've been able to now open up that sector, particularly to be able to now have big data gathering on specific priority minerals. We have been able to establish mineral processing clusters within the six geopolitical zones. And conscious of the security issues, we have a mines surveillance tax force so as to make the mines very safe. At the same time, communities are very key to any mining project. And as such, being able to give attention to community-related communities, it will create that needed synergy and environment for successful mining, which will impact the growth and development of the mining sector. We need to be able to now look at our strategic mapping for green economy. This entails taking advantage of the geology that we have. Nigeria is, has a favorable geology and Nigeria is blessed with all the minerals you can think of. We have mapped over 500 mineral locations of which looking at the critical minerals, lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, and so on, these, at the end of the day, will be able to now enhance Nigeria's role in green technology. Furthermore, in the quest to be able to now improve community engagements, we've been able to now revise our community development agreements guidelines so that when investors come, they will be able to now have a hitch free and a regulated community relations guidelines towards investment in the sector. At the same time, we are very conscious and have created infrastructures to some of these locations. In the early years, you find out that one of the key components or attributes used for our railroads and, and other networking was based on mineral locations in the state, I mean in, within the country. And that is why you find anywhere in the country we have the ports, we have the rail lines, which, of which if you have your bulk minerals, you'll be able to now ship them. The environment is very key, and as such, we are conscious of our ESG goals 
and ensure that we adhere strictly to them. No matter what happens, you must be able to now look at your mining code. You must be able to now look at your policies. You must, at the end of the day, be able to now think about them. Why should Nigeria be a mining destination? It is based on your policies. It is based on your mining code. It is based on your institutional and legal framework. And that is why in terms of our policies, we have to be able to now look at and have the best international practice by strengthening our policies and partnership. And in view of that, the 2007 Act that we had is being updated and reviewed to be able to now make it more attractive, bearing in mind global happiness. These are very, very necessary, especially when we align ourselves with great partnership with the World Bank, NAITI, and so many others with emphasis on inclusivity and equitable benefits. These are very, very key towards the sector and as such, we need to be able to now reposition the mining sector for domestic and consolidated consolidation and international competitiveness. And therefore, our achievement so far is developing a policy paper. And in view of that, we looked at so many other aspects that will be able to now attract investors to the mining sector. Positioning the sector for domestic consolidation and international competitiveness does not exclude looking at key among them, apart from the data that we are talking about in terms of geoscience data, looking at the licensing system. And in view of that, we ensure that we sanitize the system to create more transparency in the sector. And in order to have a further growth of the sector, we have to be able to now look at enhancing physical incentives. The incentives include, but not limited to, capital tax rates from 20 to 30% deferment of royalties, three-year tax holiday, custom exemption duty for machinery and equipment, 95% capital allowance, free currency transfer amongst others. Most importantly, we need to be able to now look at what is our vision for sustainability. This, we need to be able to now look at it clearly we need to be able to have a vision that is sustainable, that can, that can uh, uh, create inclusive growth. In view of that, the major goal is to increase productivity by 50%, and diversify our resources, ensure value addition, and at the end of the day, think of Nigeria and think of how to be able to now grow the sector and develop the sector. And one major thing about the purpose is to foster sustainable development, economic growth, and a more equitable society. Nigeria is a mining destination. Nigeria has the geology. Nigeria has the policies attractive policies. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to end by saying that in Africa, there's a saying, with due respect to my honorable ministers from Africa, someone said and whispered and said, 
if you have gone to Africa and you have not been to Nigeria, then you have not been to Africa. <laughs> the fact that we are Africans and we are here, African down under, there is a purpose for Nigeria to be here. We have consistently been able to now come for this conference. We are not coming here for anything. We are coming here to be able to now have the needed investment for the growth and development of Nigeria. I thank you very much for listening.